Welcome back to Reddit R Us. What's the pettiest reason you've rejected someone? Story 1. My ex's name was Simone. She was studying business administration and had a horse. We broke up after she slept with another dude. I got over it and met another girl. Her name was Simone. She was studying business administration and she also had a horse. Nope. That is just an uncanny coincidence. What would you guys have done in the situation? Tell Simone number two about your past with Simone number one, or just not even say anything and ghost number two. I'm with OP on this one. I'm noping out of there. Story two. I was 13 and had been dating a girl for about two months. We were playing Jenga and I noticed that she only drew from the middle, never once from the sides. It made me feel like she was timid and boring. That was the moment I lost attraction to her and broke up with her not long after. All these years later, I'm timid and boring, and she's absolutely wild. I'm gonna chalk that up to the growing pains of puberty, those life lessons that shape who you are. Story 3 This dude was super sweet and had a lot of good qualities. He was a plumber and casually admitted to me that sometimes he will bite his nails after work and taste the remnants of what he touched that day. I could not get over that and had to move on. Edit, a few people have mentioned it's not petty, but I feel like it is, and I should probably expand on that. Things were going really great. Like he said all the right things, and he was a genuinely good person with similar interests. Up until the point he said that, I was considering moving forward with the relationship. Also, I see nail biting as a habit that could be changed, and even practicing better hygiene, which he mostly did except for those dang nails. Once he said it, and he was serious, my views and feelings for him changed. It's just one thing that completely he turned me off from him. He may have known how to lay the pipe down, but his nail biting, poop tasting, sewage eating habit crossed the line. Story 4 Went on a first date with someone that was out of my league. Couldn't believe my luck. On our way to dinner, everything was going fine and the conversation was flowing. She seemed really into me. Suddenly she screamed at me to stop the car, not pull over, stop right here, right now, immediately in the fast lane of a four lane major road. Just before I came to a complete stop in the middle of this busy road, she opened the passenger door and tried to jump out. If a cop saw all this, it probably looked like she was escaping a kidnapping. She jumped out of the car and played Frogger across two lanes of traffic, and I sat there stunned, with my passenger door hanging open into traffic. A few seconds later, she came running back with something under her arm. I couldn't see what it was in the mirror. She had a huge smile on her face, and as she climbed back into the car, she squealed with delight as she showed me what it was. A freaking hubcap. She said it was to commemorate our first date and that we could share custody of it. I could have it first. That was our first and last date. To the people out there that think she's quirky and spontaneous, y'all need Jesus. This is definitely not a petty reason to break it off with someone. Story 5. Went on a day hike with them. Halfway through the hike, we came upon a spotted skunk. I started backing off, and when he asked why, I told him it was a skunk. He argued with me, saying it was a weasel, not a skunk, because skunks have stripes, and that I obviously don't know what I'm talking about. When I kept insisting, he said I'll prove it to you as he started walking towards it. Famous last words. Anyway, he gets sprayed, obviously. We have to cut our hike short, and I make him ride in the bed of my pickup on the way home. I called it off after that, mainly because he didn't listen to me, and I hate being told I don't know what I'm talking about when I know what the facts are. Serves him right. OP can thank the skunk for exposing the guy as a fool. Story 6. He thought Vikings were mythical creatures created by Hollywood, then talked about how this TV show Tudors was interesting and not knowing that Henry VIII was a real king. Although I do understand that the TV show is not faithful to history at 100%. Also, he stated that math was not real because one apple is not the same as another apple and how math can't explain that. Basically too ignorant, way too ignorant. It was complicated to have a decent conversation. This guy is definitely a conspiracy theorist. Story 7. He just couldn't or wouldn't understand menstruation. I explained it to him as best as I could. He had five sisters. We were 16 and 17 years old at the time. I wasn't with the guy yet, but I really liked him. 
I was super put off and lost interest when he asked, why don't we just sit on the toilet and let it all out at once instead of wearing pads? And then refused to listen to my explanation of how periods actually work because it was gross. Like, I can forgive ignorance to some extent, but I can't forgive refusal to learn. Story 8. His mom went away for a week and he reheated a lasagna, took a slice out and put it back in the fridge. He did this every night, reheating the entire lasagna each time. Surprisingly, he didn't get food poisoning, but I just couldn't handle that. He was so nice, but just not the smartest guy. I had an ex who I asked to put a pizza in the oven, and he did. I took a bite out of it when it was done and realized he'd left the plastic film on and it melted onto the pizza. I thought it was just weird cheese at first. He then blamed me for making him cook poor people food that he didn't know how to cook because his mom apparently didn't buy that stuff. His mom did buy that stuff because I talked to her about food recommendations before. The reason he didn't know is because his mom cooks every meal for him and he never sees it before it's finished. He assumes she makes everything from scratch. Story 9. My perpetually single friend has turned rejecting people into a bit of a sport. I'll tinder for her, which is all sorts of amusing. But one day, I had actually met someone for lunch and thought, here's someone that's kind of her type. I wonder if she'd be interested. I ended up pulling up his website and showing her some pictures of the guy. We get to about the sixth photo in of two of his cats in a treehouse. She explains, his cats look bratty. Yeah, well, that's why you're single. Still, six years later. Either she changes her care and ways, or she'll be forever alone. How are you gonna disqualify a person based on how their cats look? That's crazy. Story 10. He was just too darn tall. He was 6 foot 10, I'm less than 5 foot. Just trying to make eye contact with him made my neck sore. I couldn't fathom how anything else would work. Of course it didn't help him making a joke about how strangers would think he's a creep. Because next to him, I look like a child. Pro tip, that's a 100% effective way to get a lady to not like you. I'm 5'2 and very briefly dated someone who was 6'7. He kept using my head as an armrest, particularly if we were in line for something. Though he did stop doing that after I bit his elbow, I dumped him because he liked playing head games. Like the whole distant so you'll like me more crap. Even at 19, I just did not have the time or energy for that. Story 11. Years ago when Tinder was semi new, I went on a date with a dude that forgot to disclose that he had epilepsy. I didn't have a problem with that. The problem started when he started having a seizure, so I got help and called an ambulance. He yelled at me for calling an ambulance, left me several voicemails the following day, screeching at me for being a horrible person, leaving him with an ambulance bill. Edit, I live in America where the medical system is a joke. When the ambulance arrived and helped my date through the seizure, he was okay and aware of what happened after that. They had asked him, do you have any medication we should know about? And he said, yes, I have a prescription, but I don't like to take it. I haven't taken it in a few weeks. I was completely blindsided, yet understanding, of how someone would refuse to take their medication, but geez. The guy had no right to be a douchebag. OP did the right thing by calling an ambulance, since she didn't know he had epilepsy. The guy should have been thanking OP for being genuinely worried for him. Story 12 I broke things off once because of the size of her teeth. They were tiny compared to the size of her mouth. It shouldn't have been an issue, but it creeped me out. I don't know why, but it was one of those things that I couldn't ignore, and gradually became the only thing I could see. Grown woman with a mouthful of baby teeth. Just weird. I have a friend who's the king of breaking up with women for petty reasons like this. I think he may have rejected a girl for her teeth size. He left a perfectly beautiful and sweet woman once because her skin was too pale. Another time it was a potential mate's feet that bothered him. I ran into him at a brewery and he was on a date with a beautiful girl that was dark skinned and dark haired so the pale issue wouldn't be a thing. And as I'm standing at their table chatting, I noticed her hand wraps almost completely around her pint glass. Very large hands for a woman. Wouldn't be a big deal for me, but I knew she was doomed in regards to a relationship with this guy. Story 13. We were gonna have a little picnic in a local park. Nothing fancy, just picking up fast food and chilling at a local park by a river. And when we stopped to pick up food from a local fast food chain, they took a really long time to order. Like holding the line up for long enough that not only did I already get my food, but they were asked to step aside so that other people could order. They then proceeded to cause a scene by getting pissed at the guy behind the counter to the point they were told to leave. I then drove them home and they were so angry about the trip to the Burgerville that they ranted the whole way and missed the fact that I drove them home. Ah, the exchange was great. 
I parked in front of their apartment. I can't believe they were so freaking rude to me. I'm never going back to that crap hole. Well, we're here. Seriously, F those people. Who the F do they think they are? Please get out of my car. Those pricks telling me that I'm a problem? Please get out of my car. They continue ranting. So I start getting out of the car with the intent to hop back in when they got out. They get out of the car angrily and slam the door. I hop back in and lock the doors. I can't freaking believe it. Wait, this isn't the park. It's been fun. Have a better day. They started screaming obscenities as I pulled away. They called me almost non-stop until I blocked their number. So my initial reason was petty, but I'd say it worked out for the better. Definitely dodged a bullet there, OP. Low-key, that's why I like to look at the menu beforehand when I go out to eat, so that I'm not causing an awkward silence in the front and holding up the line. The person OP was on a date with was clearly named Karen. I can't believe she was so rude after the fact and was oblivious to everything else going on. Story 14. I went on a match date years ago with this super sweet pilot. I live in a navy town. He was really into me and we got along great, but he had the tiniest hands. Not like medically tiny hands, but just smaller than I was used to in a partner. I'm short statured but I have bigger hands and feet and I just kept staring at his hands gripping his beer glass the whole night thinking about what holding hands with him would be like and how monstrous my hands would look in comparison and I just couldn't do it. How to turn him down for a second date. ETA, I've seen a bunch of people comment about their own small hands. I'm sorry, it wasn't my intention to make people with small hands feel bad. I think my issues was rooted in my insecurities about my own hands. They're not super feminine and kind of chubby. I have like 10 year old boy hands scaled up to have an 8 ring size. His hands were perfectly fine and I'm sure someone without insecurities about being bigger than their mate in general and who wasn't a total weirdo like me wouldn't have even noticed. Story 15. I was rejected because I didn't like the taste of his preferred beer. That was it. I wasn't asking him to stop drinking it. I just didn't personally want to drink it. We were about to order another round. He asked if I knew the one he had just had and offered me a taste. I gladly accepted because I try to be open to tasting new things. I just said I found it a little too hoppy for my taste and I was happy to stick with what I was drinking. I wasn't rude. I said it was nice, but a little too hoppy for me. His face dropped. It was almost comical. He then said something along the lines that he had changed his mind and he had better get home. That was the end of the first date, as in he literally decided he no longer wanted another round. The date was over. He had blocked me on Facebook before I walked the 100 meters to the bus stop. Pretty sure I dodged a bullet there. Story 16. She smelled funny. Not bad. It clearly wasn't a case of not washing or anything like that. She just smelled weird. Couldn't get over it. Edit for clarification. I didn't know how to broach the whole, I like you and you're funny and smart and making love is great, but you smell weird. So I just moved to a different country. My wife said she was having second thoughts after our first two dates because of a weird smell. Like, not necessarily a deal breaker, but close. Turns out it was the jacket that I was wearing. Nice mountain hardware techie fleece thing. Love that jacket, but apparently it smelled just a tiny bit like soup. It went mysteriously missing on our third date, never to be seen again. To this day, my wife denies any involvement in the disappearance, but I have my suspicions. We could have just tried, you know, washing it. To be clear, I definitely just lost it, but it's fun to imply it was secretly thrown in the river in some elaborate scheme. Story 17. He didn't have soap at his apartment. Even by the third date, no soap anywhere at his place. No dish soap even. He never smelled or anything, but it just weirded me out. My brother had a roommate who would bathe and get ready for work in like 3 minutes. My brother couldn't believe anyone could bathe that fast, so he hid his soap one day just to see. For 2 weeks straight, the dude would go into the bathroom to take a bath and be out in 5 minutes. No questions asked about the soap. That was still fine until he told my brother that not only did he take a bath in those 5 minutes, but also took a dump. No soap anywhere. Story 18. He said he never washed his butt because it was sus to touch his own butt. After that moment, all I ever saw when I looked at him was poop. He was literally a walking turd. Never dropped someone so fast in all my life. Story 19. Her toenails were so long whenever she was nearby, you could hear clicking from the ground as if she was a dog. Yes, she is real and I am not making this up. For anyone asking how she functioned, I guess she was okay walking around with fungal nails and one shoe size above her normal. 
The nails kind of curved down so they'd fit snugly into the shoe. Story 20. Hooked up with the girl next door once. She had some similar taste in music to me and her favorite hobby was singing and playing guitar. But she couldn't sing to save her life and had a serious pair of lungs on her. The walls were paper thin and every time I'd arrive home, she'd suddenly pick up her guitar and start singing some of my favorite songs painfully loud. I assume in an attempt to grab my attention that she was home too. And it was too agonizing hearing some of my favorite songs being ruined by her wailing, deafeningly loud voice. I didn't want to be rude and couldn't exactly tell her to stop singing, so I had to just tell her I wasn't interested. She quieted down and stopped making my eardrums bleed using my favorite songs after that. Felt like a jerk, but I had to preserve my sanity. Story 21 I didn't do the rejecting in this case, I was on the receiving end. Matched on an online dating app. Conversation starts well. She asked what I was up to. I told her I was preparing my syllabus for teaching a firearm course. Immediately things take a downturn and she starts asking if I own guns and how many. Then tells me the dinner we planned is out along with ever meeting. Story 22. He looked over his shoulder as he was leaving after our first date. But he did it in this insanely convoluted, I'm in a lifetime original movie and this is my scene kind of way. It was so freaking deliberate and odd. I started looking behind me to see if there was something shocking going on in the back of the Starbucks. Nope. Just Keith having his glowing moment in the spotlight. It seemed like a really fake thing to do and I got the immediate impression that he was either so insecure that he chose to emulate Hollywood tropes rather than cultivate his own personality or he had a bad case of main character syndrome. And as it turned out, he did. We only texted for a few days after but it was non-stop selfish BS and small drama the whole time. Politely declined a second date and then found a rose and a note on my car a few weeks later that said, this could have been our love story. With the picture of Brad Pitt he'd cut from a magazine. Nobody else in the picture, just Brad Pitt. Many of the people in the stories today had valid reasons to break it off with someone. Like if the other person is a straight a-hole to people, I think that's a pretty valid reason to end things. The most petty rejection in my opinion was when one of the OPs got straight up rejected because she politely rejected her date's favorite beer. Comment down below if you've rejected someone for either petty or valid reasons. Thumbs up the video and subscribe for more Reddit stories.